We're now going to move on to a new unit, which is all to do with hardware. And we're going to be looking at all the basic types of hardware and then zooming in perhaps a bit more to look at how the CPU architecture and how the different registers and all of those kind of things work as well. So let's start by looking at memory. So according to the syllabus, you should be able to explain the difference between random access memory and read-only memory. Now this is a continuation from IGCSE, so you won't have any difficulty. Where things diverge slightly from IGCSE is the uses of static RAM and dynamic RAM. So we're gonna be looking at that in a bit more detail. We're then going to be looking at the differences between programmable ROM, PROM, and then we're going to be looking at what erasable, programmable ROM, EEPROM, and electrically erasable programmable read-only memory EEPROM what the differences are between all of these three and how they are now ushering a new era of rewritable reprogrammable ROM which is then in turn making the way we use SSDs become faster and faster. Eventually the goal probably is to get the same kind of speed that you get in read-only memory using an SSD and that will usher in a new era of super fast computing. So let's begin by looking at some key terms. So you should already be familiar with memory cache, which is high speed memory external to the processor, which stores data, which the processor will need again. And then you've got random access memory, which is primary memory. You can write and read from it. It's normally volatile. And then you've got read only memory, non-volatile primary memory as well, that can only be read from. But as you can see, things are changing. DRAM or dynamic RAM is a type of RAM chip that needs to be constantly refreshed. And if it's not refreshed, it loses data. Static RAM, on the other hand, is a type of RAM chip that uses some gates called flip-flops. We'll be looking at flip-flops in a lot more detail in year 13. And it doesn't actually require refreshing, so it holds data. A lot of our solid-state devices are using similar technologies, so quite interesting. Refresh is basically the requirement to charge a component to retain its electronic state. You can see where it comes in handy when you're dealing with RAM. Programmable ROM, on the other hand, is a type of ROM chip that can be programmed once. And you've got a lot of alternative types of ROM. Erasable programmable read-only memory, which can be programmed more than once using UV light. And then you've got EEPROM, which is read-only memory chips that can be modified by the user, which can then be erased and written to repeatedly using pulse voltages and so forth. Now do pause the video and jot these key terms down. And when you're ready, continue on. Now let's start by looking at cache and registers. The pyramid that you see on screen is looking at the fastest to the slowest. So internal memory include components such as registers, which are often part of the processor. Think about the von Neumann diagram and so forth. You've got registers which are built into the hardware, like accumulators, memory address registers, memory data registers, interrupt registers, index registers, all sorts of registers which are part of the CPU themselves. Now these are super fast because they operate almost at similar speeds to how the CPU operates. And then there is something called the memory cache, which is external to the processor. So it's a data store between the immediate access store, which is the RAM and the registers or the CPU. And you will have different levels of cache as well. So we're gonna look at all of that in a moment. Now this cache, just like the Pyrus treasure cache, cache chest. So all of those terms is basically a store of data which the processor will probably need to use again. So you keep a cache of goods in your house somewhere, food perhaps, and then you access it without going to the store. And it's similar principle really. Now the common term of all of this is internal memory and not primary memory. So never give cache and registers as examples of primary memory. You will just end up losing marks. Now primary memory itself consists of RAM and ROM and RAM has two parts, SRAM and DRAM, static and dynamic RAM. And ROM has three components that we need to know about, which are PROM, programmable read-only memory, which you can probably flash once. And then you've got EEPROM, which uses UV light. And then you've got EEPROM, which is electronically erasable one, which uses different voltages to alter what data is stored 
in it. So we're going to be looking at all of these and we need to ensure that we know when to use what and what the differences are. You might also need to apply your knowledge to real life scenarios and recommend different types of RAM and ROM for different uses. Now let's start by comparing SRAM and DRAM, the two main types. So let's start by looking at DRAM. DRAM consists of a number of transistors and capacitors. It needs to be constantly refreshed. It's very cheap, less expensive to manufacture than static RAM. And it's got a higher memory capacity as a result of that because it's using cheap materials, so you can use a lot of them. And the main memory, like RAM, is constructed from DRAM itself. So it ends up consuming more power than static RAM because you need to constantly refresh it, which is a disadvantage of it. Now, SRAM, on the other hand, uses flip-flops to hold each bit of memory. You don't need to know at AS level what flip-flops are. Basically, if you're interested, these are just gates. So you have a combination of different gates, probably an XOR and an AND gate, and it allows you to take the output from one gate and flip it back as an input to a previous gate, flip-flop. Now there are a number of different ways you can construct these flip-flops. You can use NAND gates, which are most common, or you can use NOR gates, which are uncommon, but more expensive. But we're going to be looking at all of that at A2 level. Now SRAM does not need to be constantly refreshed due to this particular property. And as a result, you can have a faster data access time than DRAM. Now processor memory, especially cache, makes use of SRAM. And generally, SRAM doesn't use a lot of power compared to DRAM. But in certain cases, if you're accessing at a high frequency, power usage can exceed that of DRAM as well. So obviously, if you're refreshing or accessing it more often and writing to and reading from it constantly, you can end up using a lot more energy compared to dynamic RAM. We're now going to look at RAM and ROM. And this is just a refresher of what you know from IGCSE. So just pause the video and just have a look through that. There should be nothing that should be surprising here. RAM, temporary, volatile, can be written to and read from, used to store data files, part of the operating system which is currently in use, can be increased in size to improve the operational speed of a computer. ROM, on the other hand, is permanent, non-volatile, data store cannot be altered in most cases for ROM. Remember, it can be altered for PROM and EEPROM and all of that, but ROM is read-only memory. It cannot be altered. ROM is used to store the BIOS and other data needed at startup. And between both RAM and ROM, you should be fairly comfortable in dealing with a question related to the differences between them. Now let's move on to PROM, or going to the PROM. A programmable read-only memory is a type of a ROM chip that can be altered once. It's made up of a matrix of fuses, and you need a PROM writer which can pass electric current to alter those specific cells by burning those fuses in the matrix. So think of these as different fuses, and you can use them a burnt as zero and a working one as one, and you can utilize that to write over whatever the initial instructions were. So it can only be burnt because you're physically burning using electric current the, the device itself. You can't rewrite a programmable read-only memory. You'll probably find these in mobile phones or RFID tags, which is set by the manufacturer. And then when you get hold of it, you can set it up according to your preference. Now, jokes aside, what do you call a prom during a lockdown? The answer is EEPROM. I thought that was very original and very funny. But anyway, let's move on. An erasable programmable read-only memory, EEPROM, is very different to a PROM chip because they use floating gate transistors and capacitors rather than fuses. So UV light, ultraviolet light, is used to program an EEPROM chip. And you normally do that through a quartz window, which is made out of pure glass. And you can just about make it on the bottom right-hand corner side. There's an image, and you can probably see that little quartz window on the center. Now, these are used in applications which are under development, such as programming of new game consoles. You want to have a prototype console you give to people who can use it to program things or test things out and check different types of BIOS and 
how memory allocation works and all of those kind of things. There is another version of EEPROM which is called electronically erasable PROM and this allows data to be erased a number of times. Now this type of PROM is used in SSDs. It uses NOR chips as we were talking about earlier and electrical signals to erase data. Now we're going to be looking at that in a bit more depth when we look at SSDs later on. But the main difference between EEPROM and EEPROM is that the content of EEPROM is erased using ultraviolet light. On the other hand, the content of EEPROM is erased using electrical signals. So you can see both of those chips side by side on the bottom right hand corner of, of your screen. And if you want to do some more research and find out you know, how they're used, do pause the video and have a look online. Hopefully you found some interesting things about both of them. And now your main task is to describe how ROM and RAM chips could be used in a microwave oven, a refrigerator, and a remote controlled aeroplane. Now the movement of the aeroplane is controlled by a handheld device. You know how these things work. It could be a car, you can remote in your hand and you can move it left, right, up, down, whichever direction. And if it's an aeroplane, you can similarly use navigation controls to control its flight path. Do share your work with me once you complete it. And that should give you a good understanding of how these types of devices can be utilized in not just computers, but embedded systems as well. If you do get stuck, please do let me know. But by now, you should be able to give two differences between SRAM and DRAM. You should be able to explain the purpose of a cache. You should be able to talk about the differences between RAM and ROM. You should be able to explain what a PROM is and the differences between electronically erasable PROM and erasable PROM. That's all for today. I will catch you in the next lesson.